Well, as you probably know, you're not allowed to bring meat and dairy into the EU anymore. So we've arrived really with uh, minimal food. So this is the first chance we've had to get a big shop. So uh, is that a Northern expression, a big shop? We're going to stock up anyway. And uh, we're going to try the Intermarché because it's been on the route. So not our favorite supermarket in France, but it is convenient. So we're going to do it. Well, I didn't have to scan the uh, COVID pass, but I have got a mask on. It looks like it's still the norm here. If it's not compulsory, everybody's doing it. Well, I'm by the Haribo stand, Helen's favorite. Take a look at the choice. Haribo's for you. Oh, you know how to treat a girl, don't you? <laughs> Lovely. Fantastic. Jungle edition. I haven't done anything wrong, so I don't need to give you that. So can I have a bit of, can I have that in credit for when I do do something wrong? Yes, you can, most definitely. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. We've just arrived, or should I say last night, we arrived at our stop. It's a, a free air at a place called Orador, so a, I think it's either Sue Glan or Sue Glen. Um, it's a good park up. Um, we've met, we bumped into Forever Co-Pilots, so who we follow on Instagram, who we last saw in Norfolk about, what, about six months ago, something like that. So, Please. of all the places in all the world, we end up parked next to each other in the middle of France. Yeah. We're walking down the main street at Orador. There's uh, all the shops you can imagine on the left and the right. Boulangeries, little um, butchers as well, so you can get all the provisions that you need. Um, we're on our way down to the memorial. It's about a 15 minute walk from the air, but uh, the weather's a little bit uh, grim this morning. It's a bit like being uh, in Halifax on a Tuesday morning, but uh, it's a pleasant walk down to the memorial and uh, we'll check it out when we get there. This clearly is a sad story, and it's a story of 643 innocent people rounded up by the Waffen SS and taken to uh, different locations around the town and murdered. It seems quite poignant, really, given the events in Ukraine at the moment. That this uh, kind of atrocity that happened on the 10th of June 1944 can still be happening today. 200 Waffen SS from the Deichrack Division came here and rounded up 646 residents. It was in retaliation for partisan activity. The main offender who orchestrated this event, his actions so shocked the German army that even the SS started a an inquiry as to what had happened and in truth it didn't get very far because the individual concerned was then killed in battle in Normandy after the uh, Dashrak division was ordered into Normandy to uh, take on the invading allies but there goes um, a truly horrible event There is, of course, here a cemetery dedicated where the people who were 
murdered, massacred, martyred, whichever word is, is appropriate, are lying. But I'm not going to walk up there. Um, it seems to be to be a step too far to be filming in cemeteries, so I'm not going to do that. But needless to say, it's there. If you visit this, you can pay your respects and walk around, I'm sure. Um, but I think I've captured enough for today, so you'll understand the story. And um, I think we need to move on a little bit and get back to the van and travel further south. So we'll show you the air uh, where we stayed, such as it is. It's just basically a parking spot. There's facilities here, allegedly. They don't seem to work, but, uh, but it's still served the purpose. It's been quite a quiet night. We're leaving the air. We've had a couple of hours around Oradour Sur Glen. We're uh, making our way. Not sure exactly where we'll end up, but our first stop is going to be fuel. Now the tricky thing about France sometimes is working out which button operates water, <laughs> which which is drinking water, which isn't water, which is which is for washing the toilet water um, and the car cassette etc. And today's no exception really. We've found a, a service there, gratefully provided by Leclerc Supermarkets. It delivers a hundred litres of water because we needed to get some fresh water on board. Now we've oh, got we've yeah. got uh, hundred litre tanks with about twenty litres still in it. And this delivers 100 litres of water. There <laughs> no is no more, turning no it less. off. So and it's, it's, it's what we're finding, these quirks of things. So you have to find something else to do yeah. with the remaining 20 litres. Yes. Like quick as a flash, yeah. I've just washed the back of the van off. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's interesting. I'll just show you the machine that comes with it. Off the bonus uh, price of two euros. Two euros. Yeah, and it just gives you good. a bit of, uh, yeah. Means we can go and uh, find somewhere to stay for the rest of the, uh, rest of the day. So there's the, the machine. Two euros into there. Round we come. Push the button. Cassette emptying, or should I say grey water emptying there. Cassette emptying's around the other side. Like I say, 100 litres what you've paid for, 100 litres what you're getting. Happy days. Well, it's quite a long day, but uh, we've arrived at St Paul Dex, a little nice little park up on an air in a little wooded area, nine vans, free overnight and um, looking forward to getting settled down after a long day. Good morning. Good morning. Well the weather's gone full Manchester on us. <laughs> it's, it's raining. It's hoofing it down. <laughs> but never mind, uh, we've had sort of, I don't know, maybe 24 hours of rain really. Yeah. Um, it's testing to finish sometime today. So uh, we are getting towards the well. About an hour and a half, we'll be in the Pennines. Sorry, the Pennines. Pennines, Pennines. that's good. You've got it's Manchester. It's the weather. On the brain, it's the Manchester yeah. weather. Yeah. The Pyrenees. At a place called Saint Jean Pied de Port. And now in French. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not dampening our spirits. We're going to move on. We're quite looking forward to going here. Mm. Um, start of the French Camino. Yes. Yeah, you know, we've got this sort of uh, pilgrimage vibe going on. Yes. Uh, the history of it interests us um, and uh, we started in Canterbury and I'd look at the start of the one of the uh, pilgrimages from there and we're going to look at the start of the French pilgrimage in uh, Saint Jean-Pierre de Port. Any French? <laughs> uh, we're going to do uh, and then we're going to have a run around Spain and Portugal yeah. makes it sound like a five minute jaunt doesn't it but then we're going to come out again from the other side up towards the Santiago de Compostela. De Compostela. De Compostela. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yep, yeah, come with us, and um, we hope to have a drier day anytime soon. Yeah. We've got total gridlock in France. We've got gesticulating out of windows, horns being beeped, and we're on a roundabout, and nobody's going anywhere. There's no <laughs> need to get all continental about it. <laughs> I'll uh, turn the camera around and let you have a look. There we go, turn right just here. <laughs> I disappointed you wouldn't let me press me. Uh, no, you were not. Horn. You were not joining in with anybody else and pressing the blooming horn. Oh, we've, we've negotiated it. I have to say, that did take 
a very aggressive French lady to beep, a, beep the horn on a car quite a lot and shout at one of the roadworks men <laughs> to get him out of the car to do some traffic direction. <laughs> so I feel like he was in the middle of the road, but he's got his berry on. Yes. Oh gosh, we're very continental where we are now. Right, so we've got a right turn coming up just here. Two directions. Let's get back to concentrating where we're going.